Well, hello, chosen lady and all those who share the same faith as ours. Um, today I've got my loving people into a growing relationship with Jesus mug. Um, it's an actual mug. It's not a tumbler. That's cool. I'm going to put that down here at the base of one of these pull-up bars. I'm sure you'd love to see me try to knock out some pull-ups, but I got a shoulder injury, so probably not a good idea right now. <laughs> um, but what is a good idea is continuing um, on this uh, special channel that I've tried to design to help us understand the Bible more and to also, um, you know, learn how to implement the principles of, this, of the scripture. So this special um, study that we're doing is the book of 2 John, trying to make sure I do not state it incorrectly this time or put it incorrectly on the uh, screen when I'm editing. But if you turn to the book of 2 John, which is toward the end of the uh, Bible, if you're um, flipping, um, this is called our Single Sister Spiritual Support Series, okay, S5 for short. So um, we're on Lesson 6, B as in Bravo, because I decided to divide Lesson 6 into two segments. Um, the first segment um, dealt with, or 6A, dealt with um, the grace that God uh, talks about in Scripture, not just in 2 John, but what great, the basic meaning of grace. So if you're looking at this for the first time, it might make more sense to look at 6a, as I compete with the bird who's tweeting profusely over there. Go ahead, bird. Praise the Lord over there. So um, now we're going to take a look at the difference between grace and mercy, okay? So what's the setting? The Apostle John is older in age probably the last apostle left he doesn't even identify himself as an apostle in other words he's not going out establishing churches anymore by this time several churches are absolutely established and the governing body over those churches are elders john identifies himself as an elder and john was an elder with integrity he was someone um, who was known throughout the church and uh, he was one of the one of Jesus disciples um, and not only that he was one of the disciples in the inner circle and the Lord uh, vouched for him by um, even allowing his the Lord's biological mother Mary to be uh, taken care of by John in her later years now by the time he's writing this letter Mary um, had uh, you know left the service she was uh, no longer living uh, we're in the land of the living, I should say. She passed away, um, as did her husband. So John's an old man. Um, as I hear construction behind me, hopefully they won't come up and scoop me away. But uh, John is an older gentleman and uh, an elder in the church, and he writes this letter to a special lady that is unnamed. So you can, um, you know, just insert your name there as the chosen lady. And if you have kids, children, whether they're little or grown, um, you know, this letter is also written to your children and we're going to see that there are several important themes in this little bitty letter that packs a really huge punch and um, You know, uh, I picked a late lunch today and I see that the construction crew is is done with their lunch <laughs> So <laughs> Here uh, let's just reread it. I like to read it from the beginning uh, the elder to the chosen lady and her children whom I love in the truth and not I only but also all who know the truth because the truth who lives in us will be with us forever grace mercy and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son will be with us in truth and love okay um, so we see okay this ain't gonna work it looks like I'm definitely I'm hoping they're dumping once and moving out like we're gonna we're gonna roll with it you know what I'm saying it's just just the way it is being a preacher man it's like being in the motor pool uh, like I used to do in my captain days <laughs> but anyway um, grace what's grace let's define that as Bowman focuses grace is a uh, favor that the Lord gives us that we did not earn okay the Lord comes to us uh, while we were yet sinners Christ died for us he comes to us and uh, gives us the gift of salvation it's a gift he selects us that's the that's part of that grace that God's does for us now what's the difference between grace and mercy with mercy 
we are coming to God with whatever our problem is, asking him for grace and, um, you know, at, not asking for grace, but asking him for to meet the need, whatever it is. Um, you know, re remember the uh, lepers, um, they saw uh, Jesus and they said, uh, uh, son of David, have mercy on us. Um, you know, what did they mean? They, they meant we have a problem. We're leprous. We, 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 we need healing. They already believe. Um, they already have the grace of the Lord coming to them. Uh, he's in their physical presence and, and, and now they're calling out to him, have mercy on us and, and heal us of this uh, awful skin disease. And so, um, you know, John is writing and saying to you and to me uh, that, that mercy is available to us. So not only are we one of God's children, we're chosen, okay? You're a chosen lady, uh, but we also have the privilege of coming to the one who called us, uh, who chose us, and asking for mercy. And it starts with the deeds that we have done that are sin. See, and so how do we identify um, what is sin? Well, that's where you got to really get into the Word of God. And you know, when I first came to to Christ, and a little bit about my story, um, both of my parents had a, a a church home, two two different church homes, based on where they grew up, and we used to go to both of them. So I, I had a little bit of the um, Episcopal tradition, and I had a little bit of um, the uh, Disciples of Christ. Uh, uh, tradition, um, at least the way the, the theology of the, the back in the 70s and 80s, it has since changed. But, um, you know, uh, back then, um, you know, we, we went to both. And so I was in the house of the Lord all of my life. And then I started attending a different church of the same denomination, but a different location um, as I became a young adult, uh, excuse me, a, well, really high school. And I went to the Lord um, you know, just tried to figure out who he was and I started really believing and I got um, baptized. Um, now, uh, after getting uh, baptized, and I'm not going to say I got saved and I will talk about that, but um, I uh, started walking with the Lord in a greater way when, when I became an adult. And so uh, through the process of getting to know who Christ was and I, I had an encounter with the Lord um, when I was 22 years of age, um, and that was many moons ago, 30 years ago. Um, and after that, I started devouring the Bible and trying to read and figure out what God's principles were. But I didn't just begin to understand God's principles. I began to take the Lord's commands literally in the scripture. That's what I began doing as a young adult. And um, it was a process. Uh, because I didn't know all of the scripture, even though I had been <coughs> attending worship services all of my life. And the reason I don't do the air quote, God saved, um, the, the reason I gave you the air quote, God saved, <coughs> is because I can't go to a day on, the, on, on, on my life where, you know, I had a, I was out in the world and then all of a sudden, you know, I heard the gospel message and then that particular day I came to Christ and I've got a, a, a Jesus birthday. I, I don't have that because I had been walking with the Lord all of my life, but um, I had <clears throat> a moment where the Lord touched me. And as I look back from my younger 20s before that, he was always walking with me. He was always there. Um, I, as early as I can remember, I believed that Jesus was the way to salvation. Um, uh, so I don't know when salvation occurred for me. What I do know is I began a stronger walk of faith. Don't miss this. When I started learning the Bible the, 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 from the pages of Scripture and reading what Jesus said and implementing it in my life, reading what the Word of God said and implementing the principles, looking at the commands and saying, I am going to obey these commands. Um, for example, taking literally the scripture that says, go into all the world and, and make disciples. I've been doing that um, as best I can since 1997, um, after I graduate, graduated from seminary. Really, that would have been 1998. Um, you know, I started in 97 preaching, but in 98, um, I graduated from seminary and began to um, serve as a senior pastor uh, when I was uh, 
26, 27 years old. <clears throat> so um, I've been doing this a while. I'm 52 now, uh, truth in lending, uh, as indicated by all the speckles. Um, but <clears throat> the reason that I encourage you to do that is my voice gets, I should be taking a sip, but <clears throat> I don't want to distract any more than I already am. <laughs> so the reason I am encouraging you to read the Bible and implement it is because your life changes when you do it God's way. And when you find out what sin is, then it's been identified and you can say, I'm not going to do that anymore if it applies to you. Um, so just something simple for me, um, you know, I, you know, read the scripture that says that bitter water and sweet water should not come out of the same fountain that is talking about what comes out of our mouths. And, um, you know, I, I believe that that also goes to what's going in our ears. And I used to listen to music I had on my possession, music that was, um, you know, vulgar, basically, and disrespectful to women. And so I destroyed all of that music. Now, dating myself, a lot of that was albums and audio cassette tapes back then. So I took the tape and ripped it and threw it away, and I took the albums and smashed them. And so it kept me from listening to it, but it also kept someone else from um, getting it from a Goodwill or wherever I would have potentially donated it and corrupting that person. Um, so that's that's just one example of many that I can say for, for my life. So how about you? Are you going to the Lord asking for mercy for what you've done uh, sin-wise? Are you going to the Lord asking for mercy for a need that you have that only God can meet? Or maybe there's someone in the earth that can meet it and you don't know how it will come to you? Um, with the lepers, they had the actual healer walking there. And, you know, there were other healers that God ordained to heal like the apostles and they went out so it's sometimes you can go to a person to get your healing whether it be a doctor or the elders praying for you like it says in James and anointing you with oil um, but a lot of times there's some things we can only go to Jesus for because when it comes to healing for example he is the healer and we we come to him for mercy we come to him for mercy um, and so uh, you can't have the mercy without the grace okay the grace comes first God comes to you we we, we don't come to God first um, you know we we wouldn't know that God exists if someone did not let us know that okay um, even if it's the Lord himself letting us know someone else has to know uh, someone else has to let us know who God is um, and sometimes like I said that's God himself it happened with me um, both of them preachers told me and and my parents and other people you know let me know about the Lord but then um, I you know I read a little bit in the Bible but I had to have an encounter where God touched me to for me to get it um, and so um, don't be like me and wait you know go ahead and uh, get to know the Lord now and um, you know receive the mercy that he has for you and grace and mercy precede peace See, you receive peace from God when you have been chosen by him, and we all have the opportunity to receive him. And then uh, after that, we go to him uh, asking for mercy for the sins that we continually commit and the things that are beyond our control in our life. There's a lot of things we have control over now, but some things are beyond our control. and We go to him for mercy. All right. Soldiers just get wet if you're wondering is he gonna hurry up and finish not nah, we don't melt we soldiers Okay, this is normal um, And so uh, ask God for mercy and then you will receive the peace that surpasses all understanding now uh, Circumstances may be you know beyond your control and one thing I can do to help the situation is Don the cover. Yep There it is too easy All right, um, and so when we come to him, we get grace from him. He gives us grace. He gives us mercy. And we ask for it because we go to him for mercy. He comes to us with grace. And then peace that surpasses all understanding comes over us because we're operating in the knowledge of the fact that, that God has given us these things. Okay? Let's see if I can give an example. Okay? Um, I was in, I was deployed um, in in, in in Korea you know and uh, I I just I was having a tough time all right I was away from my family 
Um, I was challenged with post-traumatic stress, and uh, I went to the Lord and asked Him for mercy. Um, I, I knew He had come to me in His grace and saved me. I, I knew who I was in Christ, um, but but uh, because of my post-traumatic stress challenges, I, I I just had to come to Him. Lord, please give me mercy. Um, you know, help my countenance. Help me from uh, possibly tumbling into depression. And the Lord did uh, come to me. He gave me uh, companionship. He gave me um, chaplains in my, my life that were identified that could be my friends, even though they were subordinates. Uh, a couple of them, uh, Gary Sands and another Gary, ironically, uh, Gary Davis, they were subordinates, but they were friends. And um, they really helped me through uh, my deployment there in Korea. And not only that, um, but uh, the Lord helped me to focus on my ministry while I was out there. Um, so the, I got peace in the midst of my own challenges. Um, and, and when you come to the Lord for things like that, sometimes he'll direct you to a doctor, sometimes he'll direct you to a pastor, sometimes he'll introduce you to friends. Um, and that's just one example, my sister. Um, so uh, the last thing I wanna touch on, it's kind of a hint for next time, and that is I want to talk about relationships, uh, specifically um, with a single woman and a potential spouse, all right, as well as your children and their potential spouses. Um, so that's something I want to touch on next time. I just thank you for uh, tuning in. You know, there's a lot of things you could be doing, and you take a little bit of time to, to spend and look at First John. Just keep reading it keep reading it we're going to expound upon it but the topics that I'm talking about are so important for my sisters to know who they are as chosen ladies and the family members of these uh, women that are loved so much by God all right so I want you to have a blessed one and I'll go ahead and get out of the rain now God bless